This is our cat. We call her Kitty. Look at her. Oh, I know she just woke up from a nap. Oh. I tell you, each political season, it gets weirder and weirder. Like right now we have Democrats who are actually excited of the fact that Dick Cheney is endorsing Kamala Harris. I'm actually, I'm honored to have their endorsement. And I think that um, what they both as leaders who are well respected are making an important statement that um, it's okay and if not important to put country above party. Vice President Cheney interpretation of the Vice President? Vice President Cheney has been the most dangerous Vice President we've had probably in American history. But before that, cats effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. Okay. And welcome to another edition of Samba News. I'm Dwayne. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, there's been some strange reports coming out um, of Haitian immigrants in the town of Springfield, Ohio, who have been reportedly um, eating house pets, ducks and geese. I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into they flipping cars in the middle of the street. I don't know how like y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like who's getting paid from it. I feel like I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping that. You got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTime me tonight, FaceTime me this morning at the welfare office that really need like that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And I don't even want to like, seem like I'm coming down on the immigrants because it's the people that's bringing them down here because wherever they're at, that's what they're used to, bro. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them like... I'm done with what I'm seeing. It is so unsafe in my neighborhood anymore. I have the homeless that were trying to camp out and I have, I have made concessions with them and I try to help them the best I can to keep them from trying to squat on my property but it is so unsafe i have men that cannot speak english in my front yard screaming at me throwing mattresses in my front yard throwing trash in my front yard and i can't i look at me i weigh 95 pounds i couldn't defend myself if i had to my husband is elderly and last night after living in this home for 45 years he said noel guess what it's time to pack up and move he said we can't do this anymore he said, it's killing both of us mentally. I don't understand what you expect of us as citizens. I mean, I, I understand they're here under temporary protected status and you're protecting them. And I understand that our city services are overwhelmed and understaffed. But who's protecting us? If we're protecting them, who's protecting me? Now, before we continue, let's make something absolutely clear. We are not saying on this platform that all Haitians do this you know, they're running around and you got to protect your cats from every Haitian that's out there and the ducks and the geese at the pond. You got to protect them because these Haitians are coming over and they're just doing all of this stuff. We're not saying that at all. OK, so let's be very clear because I know people will look at the thumbnail and in the first 30 seconds, you're already in the um, in, in our comment section. So we're not saying that at all. You know, as someone who has grown up in a community, in a place where I've seen it go from a mostly white community to a mostly black American community. And now it's pretty much converting over to a Haitian community. Now, if something like that did happen or take place, you know, where cats and dogs and stuff are missing and all of this stuff, you know, in at least that community that I'm very familiar with, it was extremely rare. I mean, extremely rare. But that's still kind of weird if it is happening. Now, there hasn't been any, I looked into this, there hasn't been any um, firm confirmation that cats were being taken, abducted, and, and being eaten and all of that. You know, there's some hearsay on social media, but I personally have not been able to confirm that. However, um, 
as far as the ducks and geese go, I, I guess we, we're going to call this duck gate, geese gate. I don't know. We do have this picture. Now, this picture could have been taken in Ohio. It could have been taken anywhere. I don't know. I can't confirm that. But we do have this coupled with the testimonies of those two individuals of, that are in that town who are saying that, yes, this is something that they know about and they have seen. And so we have that. So we can kind of say that perhaps, yeah, this is something that's going on over there. But is pet consumption really the story here? Or is it something else? That is why also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. So what's going on over here? Right now, this is some kind of like officials from, I mean, U.S. immigration. They came to talk to the people out right here, to the refugee people. They let them know how to use the, the uh, CBP-1 app. On their phone. They can use an app on their cell phone called CBP1 ONE. Are there plans to increase appointments with CBP1? No, the 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 number of appointments that are permitted uh, through CBP1 approximately 1,400 to 1,500 a day. Listen, the whole point is that we have to understand Haiti. I mean, talk about a country that has just experienced so much uh, tragedy that has been about natural disasters that the, that the head of state assassinated. And we really have to do a lot more to recognize that as a member of the Western Hemisphere, we've got to support some very basic needs that the people of Haiti have to get back up. This then turns into this. To take them, you for the theory. Everybody in general to go out there, you know, just speak to your family, speak to your friends. Just go out there and vote because every single vote count. And um, go Kamala Harris. <laughs> Jimmy Jean Louis, my brother, I think it's just so fitting that you are punctuating the end of this night on Emancipation Day as you come from Petionville to Los Angeles, right? From yes, Haiti, indeed. the United States of America on this emancipation. When I was thinking about it, the first speaker was Cheryl Lee Ralph, who played my mother in the TV show Claus as a Haitian mother. Right. And I'm happy to be ending this rally here. Uh, so together we just close in full circle. It's unbelievable. You know, the Caribbean community is coming together. So go. So as we can clearly see that this is a backdoor uh, um, policy that is giving Democrats and I would just say politicians in particular in general um, some benefit. They're getting some benefit out of this. And also, let's not forget, you have local businesses as well that are also getting benefit out, out of this. So, you know, a lot of the noise you hear is coming from the locals, people who, you know, who, who have their homes, they have to live in this you know, situation and all that, but the corporations, the businesses, the factories and stuff, oh, they're not complaining at all. In fact, they're encouraging it. It's said that, that they have work visas, but the work visas show that the, the uh, company that they work for is not, a, is, it's not a factory that we have here. So, you know, that's one of my concerns. Who is heading up, um, watching over this situation what information can you give me about this situation i'm just concerned so unfortunately sure we don't have any um, information to provide to you we don't have um any information we, we just don't have any information on it and if you did not see our video um that we did about um the whole thing about black farmers see a lot of people again you know, we're cheering the fact that, oh, the black farmers, they got that big payout by Biden and justice is finally coming. See, I knew Biden really loved us black people and he's doing all this stuff. But we played a clip in that video. Uh, it was a video that was an interview that was done a little over a year ago 
by uh, the gentleman that's over the black farmers, this black farmers organization, where he acknowledged that they are, in fact, using undocumented workers to come in and, you know, and to help do what he needs to do, while at the same time saying that, you know, making a claim or I should say a false claim that young black people aren't in aren't interested and doing that kind of work. And we did this video showing that, no, that's not true at all. See, my basic issue with the whole open borders thing, it's it's not so much the people themselves because, you know, I'm a type of person, you know, I don't assume anything until, you know, you give me a reason to, <laughs> you know, to do that, you know. And so I'm kind of a blank slate with most people that I encounter. But you can't really be like that when you're dealing with the border situation. You're going to need a little bit more information. And the truth is, you really don't know who's coming in. And and there's really no way of knowing that. In this particular case here, we're talking about Haitians. Haiti, by the way, isn't really a country known for keeping some awesome records on their people. One of those immigrants, Amos Marcelin, also attended the meeting where he spoke to your hometown stations about his current experiences and why he fled Haiti. I am now in Lima under the program they call Humanitarian Program Parole. We are obliged to leave that country, that beautiful country, because there's no hope there. Gangsters, they abuse the girls, they kidnap people, they remove, they cut the, the good part of the body, kidney, heart. They sell to other country. So you have dream. You want to be something in, your, in the future. Your parents pay school. Some of the, your parents, they pay, they sell their car, they sell their goat to send you to school. They kill you in the way. So how can we tell who's who in these massive amount of tens of thousands of people that are coming over um, when there's really no way of finding out exactly who's the gang member, who's this person, who's that person. There's nothing like that. And see, let me just go on even further than this. See, there's a bigger game at play here. They intentionally bust a lot of these people or fly them in or however to these small towns because they know that these small towns aren't equipped to handle that, okay? See, I'm trying to peep you the game a little bit. And so what happens? These small towns now have to depend on federal dollars which come attached with federal conditions. So now these towns have to comply with whatever the federal government is saying to abide by whatever the policy is when it comes to um, handling these immigrants that are coming in. Folks came here because they were looking for jobs. Springfield's mayor says those immigrants are straining his city's resources. But we're saying anywhere between 15 and 20,000 immigrants is what we're seeing within our community. In a town of what population? 60,000. Rob Rue says his police and fire departments are staffed for 60,000 people. He needs more cops and firefighters to handle the steadily increasing population. We need to hire 10 to 15 more on each of the departments. And let's not forget the role that local churches are playing with all of this as well. So you have pastors like this individual here, Reverend Carl Ruby of Springfield. Now, this article that you see on your screen right now was back in uh, 2017 when um, when then President Trump was in office and he is a strong advocate for immigration. And um, he has been working with uh, local um, with the locals in Springfield to keep the immigration situation going. So him, along with other pastors, are using Christianity as a way to continue this thing. And as you just heard earlier from the uh, local government, they're saying that we, we can't handle this too much. So you got the, the, the local government saying it's too much. We're being overcrowded. But you got the, the pastors and the preachers in the town saying, no, keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. It's who's who. I mean, what's going on here? You see the confusion?
So tell me your thoughts. What, what do you think about all of this as it pertains to what's going on in places like Springfield? You may be in a town right now where you're seeing a lot of this happen, and it may not just be with Haitians. It may be other groups as well. We're hearing a lot about the Venezuelans that are coming in and, um, you know, and, and a lot of other groups that are just being forced in. And let's not forget, again, the Ukrainians. Let's not forget the people from Afghanistan. There's people, all, a lot of this is coming in. And it is causing some serious disruptions on people's lives for real. While at the same time as black Americans, we're getting pushed further and further to the back of the line. Tell me your thoughts and put it in the comments below. Let's continue the conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in to Samba News. I'll see you next time.